Yes, possible. Uh, attacks similar to the pager incident could uh, theoretically target smartphones as well. And there have been various uh, proof of concepts of uh, this kind of attacks. Modern smartphones are even more vulnerable due to their complexity, connectivity, and widespread usage. They are interconnected with networks, applications, and various components that can remotely be accessed or hacked. So if an adversary uh, gains physical access to a device during manufacturing or, say, distribution, hardware could be altered to improve malicious components. In the past, uh, smartphones have been compromised through software vulnerabilities, uh, but uh, these kind of physical tampering represents a higher level of threats and supply chain uh, corruption, alteration. This is something that now the world is talking about. Wearables and medical devices are also vulnerable. In fact, um, the Internet of Things, uh, we live in an era of IoT with IoTs being surrounded everywhere. Uh, talking about uh, even vehicles, like most of the vehicles that we see today, they are semi-autonomous or autonomous vehicles. Uh, in fact, many countries are working on the autonomous, autonomous vehicles as well. So they are vulnerable to these kind of uh, attacks, different kinds of attacks and compromises. So devices like smartphones, earbuds, or even healthcare devices like pacemakers use batteries and other electronic components that could be modified to contain malicious payloads. Uh, pacemakers in particular are high stakes target because they control vital function. Um, in fact, uh, your life could be at risk uh, if certain tampering happens. In fact, they have already been warnings uh, about potential uh, to remotely hack pacemakers. And one of the cases was, uh, in fact, that I saw that was dated way back in 2012 uh, when the then uh, vice president of America was being targeted to the pacemaker. In fact, they have, uh, there have been multiple such kind of attacks and proof of concepts. While the risk is typically associated with the data or performance manipulation, uh, the inclusion of physical threats like the explosive tampering is possible if adversaries infiltrate the supply chain. Well, as for the sources and what I've been reading uh, in different mediums, the source of such an attack could be adversaries like the state-sponsored intelligence agency. I'm not going to pinpoint which agency, we'll get to know with time. The attack could exploit a device's supply chain, inserting compromised components or malware at a manufacturing facility, an assembly line, or a ship, or it could possibly be during the shipping process as well. Countries with advanced cyber warfare capabilities are known to invest heavily in both offensive and defensive operations, making them potential sources of this kind of attack. Pagers, despite being an older technology, contain essential electronic components like batteries, circuit boards, and transmitters. A pager could be rigged by altering its internal, adding a small amount of explosive material, triggered by a remote signal, or even by its battery overheating. The Hezbollah pages may have been modified with these kinds of hidden explosive, or like I mentioned, the other form could be the battery overheating. Oltec does not have the same sophisticated security measures found in modern devices, making it easier to tamper with the undetected. Now, this shocking incident highlights how global supply chains are vulnerable at multiple points from manufacturing and assembly to transportation and final delivery. If adversaries can infiltrate at any stage, they can implant malicious hardware or alter software undetected. The fact that pagers, a relatively simple technology, was rigged shows that any device relying on international production and distribution could be compromised. This could extend to more complex devices like smartphones, medical equipments, defense equipment, critical infrastructure, potentially leading to large-scale uh, disruptions of the critical networks or infrastructures. <music> Several checks and balance that the smartphone manufacturers may need to implement of them are listed out for you. Uh, supply chain audits being number one, uh, with regular inspection of factories and also the suppliers are required to ensure that they meet security and quality standards. 
Well, the next major thing that needs to be done is component tracking. That these manufacturers need to track the position and the movement of each component to the supply chain to detect any possible tampering. So, security advisory of the checklist could be encryption and secure boot. Though most of the modern smartphone manufacturers are using cryptographic methods to ensure that firmware or software they don't get tampered with. If a device's software or hardware does not match with what it is expected, it can prevent the device from operating. Hardware security modules HSM is another good, uh, uh, I would say, security measure. Uh, it is like a special tamper resistant component that protects cryptographic keys and prevents unauthorized access of physical tampering. And finally, the third party certifications. Devices may need to undergo independent testing. There are multiple kinds of uh, standards uh, for hardware security. They need to undergo for testing. They need to, uh, to undergo for different kinds of security standards, including tamper detection, before it reaches the consumers or the end users. Uh, so there are many more in the list, but these are some of the things that I would like to highlight to the manufacturers. Uh, though it cannot completely eliminate the risk of tamper devices, especially when you are dealing with sophisticated attackers like the state sponsored attackers or the actors.